23 minutes now after the hour. The national debt is expected to cross the $16 trillion mark. That's more than I have in my checking account. I hope so. Smack dab right in the middle of the Democratic National Convention. But right now, the Obama campaign seems to be placing blame on Republicans for exploding the debt. Listen. They are not credible on the deficit. Paul Ryan stood on that platform and he looked up at that deficit, at that debt clock, and uh, he made no mention of the fact that he that he voted for every single one of the policies in the last decade that are at the root of the explosion of the debt. Two unpaid wars, two unpaid tax cuts, an unpaid Medicare prescription drug program. They have no standing to talk about deficits, and their plans today would explode them in the future. Joining us now is Reince Priebus, the chairman of the Republican National Committee. Good to see you, Reince. Hey, good morning, guys. How, How do you respond you? to David Axelrod? Because it was it was the brainchild of your organization to put that debt clock yeah, right. up at the RNC. How do you sure. respond? Well, I mean, first of all, I don't think anyone said there isn't plenty of blame to go around. But the fact of the matter is, is that the president put the debt on steroids. I mean, he, in three and a half years, grew the debt by 51 percent. So... Um, clearly, the Republican Party, and, and, and quite frankly, if anyone has standing to talk about it, it's Paul Ryan, because he's the one that put, in spite of political peril, a budget on the table that actually tackled the 10-year debt window, which right. the president ignored. The, the, the problem the president has is that he's seen as a hypocrite on the issue. He doesn't seem credible because he's the one that promised to carpet the world. He's the one that promised to cut the debt and the deficit in half, the deficit, and get the debt under control. And he didn't do it. He promised to carpet the world? That's a good line. Well, that's what he <laughs> promised to do. Unfortunately, he didn't come close. And so, in the end, their biggest problem is, in spite of the distractions, the shiny objects, at the end of the day, this is all going to come back to the yeah. facts and, 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 the, and the fundamental question. Are you better off today than you were three or four years ago? That's their biggest problem and vulnerability because the answer is no, we're not better yeah, off. Yeah, but, but it seems that they have an answer for that. As we've just seen from this morning and on the Sunday talk shows, they're going to blame Bush. Well, they're going to blame Bush, but the problem is is that when presidents run, they have to, uh, for re-election, they have to account for their record, and they also have to account for the future. And the question that Americans are going to be a asking themselves is, is this next four years going to be different than the last four? And so far, the president hasn't been able to answer the question. But, Ryan, uh, their big criticism was that I didn't hear, and the president must have been watching because he said he didn't hear any plans. He thought it was on, he thought he was on um, Nickelodeon. Or Nick and Knight. Uh, it's a rerun, Knight. all black you know, and white. It was white. a rerun. He said he didn't hear any plans. Did he miss something? Well, first of all, of course he missed something because, you know, one of the fundamental plans of, of Mitt Romney is that to take spending, which is about 25 cents on every dollar made in America today, is used to run the federal government. He wants to take the 25 cents down to 20, back to where it's been for decades and okay. decades and decades. Then he said he wanted to do uh, small business tax cuts from 35% uh, down to 25%. He talked about a 20% tax cut across mm -hmm. the board for all Americans. Talked about regulation reform. Talking about simplifying the tax code. But the problem that the president has here is that if people think that you're stuck in neutral and can't get the car in the first gear, what makes you think that it's going to be any different over the next four years? We, I mean, that's his fundamental problem. We appreciate you adapting your vernacular to the, <laughs> to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Must have been subliminal well, because go. I didn't put it together. But David Axelrod said yesterday that, uh, you know, Mitt Romney's got no plan. The president does. Here's Mr. Axelrod. We also need to take steps uh, to grow the economy in the long run. And the question is, uh, do, we, do we do that by cutting taxes for the wealthy, or do we pay down our deficit and invest in things like education and training, research and development and innovation, uh, clean energy technology, infrastructure, the things we know we need to grow the economy. The president has a balanced plan uh, for the long term, as well as a plan for the short term. Governor Romney has neither. Well, let's well, see I, if people actually buy that. As to the result of the RNC, Mr. Romney wound up with a bump. So the answer to the question, are you better off, you, Reince Priebus, yeah, we, four day, uh, yeah. today than four days ago, the well, answer is yes, you're better off. We definitely are. We're definitely better off. And, you know, we're better off in the sense that people got to know Mitt Romney a little bit last week. I think Ann Romney hit it out of the park, mm -hmm. Paul Ryan, Mitt. I mean, the problem with David Axelrod's comments here is that the president's been the president, obviously, for four years. He hasn't even, they haven't even passed the budget. 
I mean, they haven't done the fundamental legal well, he had requirements a of that was down 97 right. to zero. Well, that's true. Well, exactly. But, you know, he's the one that proposed trillion-dollar deficits, the biggest deficits in the history of America. So his actual record is lousy on the subject of governing in this country and fulfilling the promises he made four years ago. I mean, we're, we're running on a, on, a, on a CR in this country with a president that ran this country for two years with the House and a Senate. Right. And uh, they've got nothing to show for other than a, a terrible economy. Yeah. All right. Well, we saw you down in Tampa. Now we're seeing you here in North Carolina. It's great to be in the Queen City. <laughs> it, <laughs> it is a gorgeous city. Nice, folks. Uh, good to catch up with you again. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Frank. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Straight ahead on the rundown, the most powerful person in the White House, Valerie Jarrett. Coming up, a revealing look at just how much influence she has over President Obama. She's probably more powerful than Joe Biden. Then, to the side of the subprime, subprime mortgage meltdown, you have not heard.